All right, so if we know um, up to this point, what we would be talking about that we know is basic to intermediate WordPress, in that we've gone through different screens of the dashboard, we've created a little bit of content pages, media, we've played with menus and themes and such. There's still plenty more to learn, of course. But we've gotten to a somewhat intermediate point uh, of our knowledge. Next is going to be intermediate to advanced knowledge. And now it's, uh, we're going to segue into the e-commerce aspect of things. So e-commerce. And we'll start off by, by saying, are you sure you want to be the next Amazon? And I ask that because if you think about Amazon, we've probably all had the experience of shopping on Amazon. Let's break down that experience. Uh, people think, okay, I, I search on Amazon, I find a product, add to cart, credit card, and then it comes to my house in a few days. Well, we need to break that down a lot further. We go to any e-commerce site like Amazon, and we either browse through their uh, catalog system or search. We find an item, we can uh, add it to our cart, or sometimes what we do is, uh, you know, market something like save for later. We might not buy the product right away, and when we come back later, the cart, the the product is still in the cart. Okay, so let's say I do want to buy. I go to checkout. If I don't have an account with my credit card and all of that, if I don't have an account, I need to create an account. So I create my account, then I put in my credit card and all of that. I click purchase. So. Things are done on my end as the purchaser, as the user. Well, in the back end with Amazon, uh, what it would be was that someone, when, it was, when Amazon was only books, uh, they'd go into their warehouse where all their books were, and then they get the book off the shelf, they put it in a, uh, a box, they wrap it up, they put the, the shipping label on it, they give it to the post office, then the post office does uh, its thing, and then I get it eventually on my front door. Someone gets it out of the... Uh, mail truck and puts it on my front door. So uh, when I bought the product, I had uh, a credit card transaction. And perhaps, especially nowadays, when you buy something, what else happens with that monetary transaction? What is added to it? Tax. Um, and I might have had shipping and handling. So we need to take all of those things into mind if we are going to do e-commerce. Not every one of those things, because I may be selling virtual products instead of physical products, but all of the things that Amazon has to worry about, now we have to worry about. Product inventory, searching catalog, user accounts, tax, taxes or taxation, uh, shipping, tracking, and the most dreaded of all, refunds. So we have to keep track of all of that. We have to deal with all of that. And then one, one also important thing, getting paid. So the transaction of the money between a credit card or a debit card or, or whatever, all of that, we have to keep track of. We have to deal with. And some things are easier than others, but we have to basically deal with all of this. Hmm, what about security? Anything else maybe that comes to mind that is important to, regarding e-commerce? Feedback. Feedback, testimonials and such. Um, so the, um, the, um, all of those different aspects. We all know perhaps 20 years later what Amazon is, but if you had never heard of Amazon, how are you going to hear about Amazon? Marketing, promotion, advertising, social media, SEO. So lots of things to think about, simply and, and not just, I'm going to sell products online. We also have real. Um, or virtual products, goods, or services. We will be able to sell real products, so physical things that are going to get shipped out, we can sell that. 
we'll also be able to sell services. So uh, if, let's say, I'm a public speaker, I want to sell those services, or a plumber, or whatever, that's a service, we can sell that. We can sell virtual products. Maybe I'm a musician, I make music, and I want to sell my music. That's a virtual product, I can sell that. Uh, we even have uh, good services, or even charities. We can sell charitable stuff. Well, that is what, uh, so, uh, donations and such. So we will be able to do all of that. And we've got all of these things to think about, and that's what we'll be covering in the second half of the class, the intermediate to the advanced. You do all of this with a plug-in or two or three or more. So uh, we're going to cover two main plugins, two recommendations for ecom plugins. Uh, I want to cover one called WP eCommerce and one called WooCommerce. We're going to look at WP eCommerce first and then WooCommerce second. Um, each one has its own pluses and minuses, its own pros and cons. Uh, the reason I cover both is often easier to set up and use as for WP uh, as for WooCommerce more powerful but more complex so once we get some skills in one plugin we will be able to apply them to another relatively easily um, I'm gonna cover both we'll cover this first one and then uh, we'll look at the second one. As I said before, you should only have one e-commerce plugin um, running at a time. Just like I said about themes, uh, keep the ones that are necessary. I've said it before about plugins. Uh, you don't want to use two different SEO plugins. They're trying to do the same thing. They might conflict. You don't want to use more than one uh, e-commerce plugin, they might conflict. So let's work with WP e-commerce first. Let's go over to the plugins screen and search for a plugin called WP e-commerce. Plugins add new. Search WP e commerce. So even though I'm trying to search for exactly what I what I think I want, it'll still give me eleven hundred or so results. <laughs> uh, because of uh, we've seen unfortunately the names of these things. Oh, WP Commerce. Obviously, they come from the official WordPress company. Not necessarily. The official WordPress company is automatic, not WP. So there may be different uh, developers, different companies that uh, have a similar sounding name. And then you're also going to see plugins that sort, sort of attach themselves to other plugins. Here's WooCommerce Menu Cart. So this. Uh, this plugin over here from Jeremiah Primer um, attaches itself to WooCommerce, and there's ones that attach themselves to other plugins, sort of like a parent plugin, child plugin. Question? Is there a way to like, see not only check something out like um, more stars or um, ratings? It's not as, as not as good as it could be. It'll show you your stars and such like this, but I would also like to see it in a nice column and like easier layout, yes. The closest thing is like this. You're gonna see results, you're gonna see stars like this, and you just have to scroll and scroll to see your stars. If you wanna see the reviews and all of that, you have to click on more details, and then under more details is where you will see the actual well, stories. In oh, in order, uh, no. No, that's one thing that they've got to improve also. This is, I don't know what order they choose for this. I would like to see them in order of stars. Can't you do popular? Uh, can't you where? 
Is the search results feature popular? Nope, that's going to tell you all possible popular WordPress plugins. It's not oh, showing you results of your search, unfortunately. So yeah, they, they need to fix that. I'm sure there's a easy way to do that. They ha they've never done it, but I would love to sh be able to sort these in a lot smarter way. I mean, I would just kind of get them rather randomly. Yep. 39 pages to browse. WooCommerce is officially from the WordPress parent company, which is automatic. Uh, and it has these great reviews, better than this, yes. But, again, to start off with the easy version of this, we'll uh, spend a couple of days or so on that one, then we'll spend a couple of days on the other one. It doesn't hurt to educate yourself as much as possible on, on a variety of software. So we're going to do WP e-commerce first um, and uh, see how that one works. Uh, so go ahead and click install now. After it installs, remember to activate. Remember to click update. So after you or not update uh, activate so after you install it under your plugin screen I see that, that, that it is there there's documentation support deactivate okay so WP commerce a plugin that provides a WordPress shopping cart and uh, version 3131 okay so when I said previously about plugins that's pretty annoying is that every plugin developer has their own idea of how to do it right. So this is another one that you get the do, you get the um, the plugin in different screens. I see it in products. We have a brand new product section right there. But we've also got uh, over on the dashboard store sales in a couple of other places. So let's let's discover a couple of things here. Click on dashboard. In dashboard on this left column we've got some new items here now if you scroll down sales summary sales by quarter sales by month so this is the example where you could rearrange these boxes maybe I want to see the um, sales summary first so just grab the box and move it up grab it by the title if you want you can also click screen options on the top right corner and turn on and off things you don't want to see. So as soon as you log into the WordPress dashboard, you could see your sales right away if you like. You can go look at dashboard store sales. This is another place. This is a place to see more details of what you've actually sold. What's the ID number? Who was the customer? What did they buy? What was the status? Did, was it rejected? Did the payment go through, etc.? When did it happen? Tracking ID. It's obviously empty at this point, um, but that'll be a very important screen to look at because. Uh, this is where you keep track of what's been sold and this is where you would go to check your uh, invoices and all of that and who you're selling your product to, shipping it to, and everything. We have also WP e-commerce licensing. The free version of the plugin is very powerful. It um, gives you all of these features to be able to create products. Uh, collect money, do taxes, everything. It's very, very complete for a free item. Uh, upgrading to the pro version, the premier version, gives you more features and you would manage that right here. Let's go look at pages. Actually, let's make some notes here. So after installing WP e-commerce, 
you get various new screens. Dashboard shows you a quick summary of sales. Inside of dashboard store sales, detailed details of sales. Dashboard WP e-commerce license. What do they call it? Licensing. Yeah, licensing. Uh, where you upgrade to pro. You also got pages. Several new pages appear regarding your store. Do you see when you go to pages, we have some new items? Products, checkout, transaction results, your account. We have some new screens added to our site. Make a note. Remember to add these to the menu. They don't add themselves to the menu automatically. We'll do that in a little bit. We get added also a brand new section of products. Manage inventory, coupons, categories, variations, etc. We have um, under plugins. where you activate, deactivate, delete the plugin. And lastly, under settings, we have a brand new section of store. So it puts itself in a variety of places in your dashboard. That's very common. When we do WooCommerce, it'll be the same sort of thing. It'll be a specific WooCommerce little section, but it'll also put different things throughout your dashboard. So settings, store, many important settings. OK, so uh, before we get too deep into this, I want to see what this looks like in the front end. I want to see uh, what it would look like for people visiting my site. So go back to visit site and go to the store. Trick question. There is no link in the front end to go to the store yet. Etsy shop is something else, remember? Mm -hmm. What's that? We haven't updated the menu yet. Exactly. Let's do that. We can't see the store anywhere. It's not in the menu. Let's go update our menu. Remember, you can go to uh, menus. Back to dashboard, appearance, menus. Or shortcut when you're in the front end, you can hover over the name of the site and go to menus. Or go to appearance menus. Okay, so here's our menu structure. Um, if you see them under recent, or if you don't, it's under view all. We need to add products, your account, transactions, and checkout. We need to add those brand new four pages to our menu. So you should be able to see them here and select them, add to menu. And then arrange them how you want. I want to actually. I don't want this Etsy shop anymore. You can remove this. You can remove this if you want. I don't want the Etsy shop. It's kind of just temporary there. 
um, I got products, your account, transactions. OK, well, I want these to be sub-items of the products page. And I kind of don't like that it's called products page. That sounds too sterile. If you want to change it to say anything else, like shop, remember you can open the little box and change the label to something more meaningful. Title attribute is the tool tip that pops up. Optional description is the text that might appear below the button, depending on the theme. Optional. But both of these could be used for a little bit of SEO uh, to put in a couple keywords there that the search engines will find. After we add items to the menu, remember to save in a little note. Nope, I'm using the same. Uh, I'm using the same products page that existed, but I just renamed it. I just opened the little box for it, and instead of it saying products page, I renamed it. Now that is annoying. If no one had told me, I might have had to eventually stumble into it. I installed a shopping cart. I installed WooCommerce. I don't see it. What happened? Well, the thing is that. Uh, Pages and such do not automatically add themselves to the menu. If only there was a way to automatically add a, an item to the menu somehow. Oh yes, there is right there. But I still don't recommend it. I don't recommend it because when I create a new page, it will add itself to the menu if I turn that on. But usually, I'm still going to come back to edit the menu to arrange it in the order that I want. I'm still going to put shop as my second item. I would be here anyway. So even if things are getting added automatically, they will just get added alphabetically, which is probably what I don't want. So that is perhaps a time saver, but I never really found it useful because I'm going to, I know, now that I know that I need to add things to the menu manually and edit them, I, I will. I don't need them to be added automatically. You could, and it might be useful, but it never really was for me. Uh, so now, once you've uh, added your shop components to the menu, uh, go ahead and um, visit site. I've got a brand new shop item. You can hover over. You see some things there. I can click on the shop button. There are no products. My account. Um, I haven't made any purchase history. I haven't logged in. I don't have anything to look at. Transactions. I, I haven't bought anything. And my uh, shopping cart, the checkout, is empty. So very anticlimactic. But we've got these uh, various screens now that we can start to populate with products and have the ability for people to create an account and review their transactions and check out and save for later and all of that. So that was the note here. Remember to add these to the menu. So if you've got the plugin installed, we kind of know that there's different screens to look at. We've added the menu, uh, we've added the screens to the menu. What's our next step to uh, set up our shopping cart? What might you think is the next menu to start to, I mean, what do you, might, might you think is the next item to do to start to be an e-commerce merchant? You're all right and you're all wrong. Um, <laughs> what I'm going at is uh, we need to go set up a bunch of settings first. I don't want to start to sell products yet. Uh, I need to set up a setting such as taxes and shipping and collecting credit card information and all of that. So that's what we'll spend a little bit of time first. There's a lot of settings to look at. We won't look at every single one of them. I'll point out some uh, useful ones and such. Uh, but we need to get a, get some settings set up first. So back to the dashboard. Under the main settings of WordPress, 
Let's go to store settings. There's a bunch of tabs right here. General, admin, etc. We'll, we'll look at each tab, but maybe not every single option. And I'll point some out. So general, a couple ones that uh, you, some of these you will need to decide what is the best setting for you. And other times, perhaps you'll need to ask, um, you know, a tax professional, a CPA, a lawyer, you know, for your particular needs. I cannot give you the answer to all of these. I don't know your particular business and its needs. I can give you examples of what I've done in my company for clients, but I'm not a tax professional at all, and I'm not qualified to give any uh, some of this advice. So you'll need to check with you know the Better Business Bureau or the Board of Equalization or all of that complex stuff, depending on how you're going to sell. But you don't you you can set up an e-commerce site just like this turn on the plug and start making money or you could set it up in a more legitimate way with a business license and a merchant account and all of that both of those ways will work I cannot recommend which of those two you should do you need to figure out how you should set it up but once you know how the plugin works a bit you'll be able to do e-commerce base country I am my business in my case is United States so I will set that and I'm specifically selling products in California. Uh, obviously, I cannot set more than one country. Uh, there is a way around that. You could, in theory, install more than one copy of, uh, of your site on the server. It's a little complex. You can think about it. But for most of us, one site with one product inventory is all we need. Uh, I'm not planning on selling to all of the countries of the world. That's expensive. So I only want USA, Canada, Mexico, maybe. So what do I do here? Click this check mark 200 times. No, you click select none. And then just turn on the three that you care about. Put whatever you want. I'm just going to put Canada, Mexico, and USA. You can set only by country, I believe. Yeah, if you need to set it even more limited, I think that might be an extra plugin, a child plugin, to set yourself even more smaller geographically. So let me set a few countries here. Well, it's a plugin that some developer has created to attach itself to a larger plugin to give more features to that other plugin. So we're going to see that a lot in WooCommerce. WooCommerce is very good and powerful, but it often relies on child plugins to give it more features. Uh, and I think out of the box, WP Commerce is pretty good for most uh, starting stores. That's why I cover it first. Okay, so two items there to check, to select. Keep stock in cart for X. This is what I said earlier, that I might go to Amazon or any other shopping site. I add something to my cart, and I'm about to check out, but I, I say, well, maybe I don't want to buy this just yet. Maybe I should pay the mortgage first. So I don't purchase something at that moment, and I come back later, and it's still waiting for me in the cart. That's what that is there. If someone adds something to their cart on your store, how long can it stay in their cart until it goes back to the general population for someone else to buy it? And you have hours, days, and weeks. You set this to whatever you think works, you know, seven days until the cart clears itself. Or maybe you can make, uh, you know, an infinite number of those cupcakes. So whatever, 99 weeks. Uh, <laughs> That same cupcake will be waiting for them whenever they come back in two years. 
probably not as fresh anymore, but they can still buy it. <laughs> Hierarchical products, don't worry. Currency settings, okay. This one again depends on your particular product and your audience and such. Uh, I'm used to the currency type and all of this stuff in, in set in U.S. dollars and in U.S. method right here. Other countries of the world put their currency symbol at the end. Others put it at the front with a space and whatever. Uh, collecting dollars and all of this, you will be able to collect money in every sort of currency when we get to that point. But you can set this that automatically. You've got yourself in Tunisian dinars or Turkmenistan manats if you want. But I'm going to go with dollars. If you want to change your separators to be in the versions that it is in other countries, you can do that there. Tracking. Um, you can have some basic tracking, but if you want more advanced tracking of products as they're going through the postal system and such, you can turn this on, but then you have to add a child plugin and extension to add more of those features. We'll just leave that. We'll just leave that off at the moment. Mm -hmm. If you're doing business in Canada and Mexico, how are you going to be collecting the dollars? The uh, the way you're collecting uh, foreign currency is going to be through the credit card processor. So when we set up the credit card processor, they will take care of that via exchange rates and everything. No. When we get to that, we'll talk about that. Uh, that's going to be under payments. But we can do it a couple of different ways. Uh, we could do a, a merchant account or another way, which we'll talk about in a moment. When we make any changes to a screen, remember to click Save Changes. Go look at admin. Okay, admin. The first couple of things we see here, these first three items, these all relate to virtual products. And that's like if I'm selling MP3s of my music or PowerPoints of my presentations or whatever. This says, how many times can a person download the song before they have to down before they have to pay for it again? So this doesn't matter to most of us. But if you were selling a song, and then, OK, their song then got erased, their computer crashed, they lost everything. They're going to be pretty annoyed if they have to come back and buy their song again. Probably you want this on two or three. And then after that, OK, well, why did you lose that song three times? Sorry, you have to pay for it again. Or you might not care, and you put that to 99 and let them download your song as many times as they want. That one's one that is completely up to you, whatever you want. This mime types, don't worry about it, leave it as is. This one, I would recommend to leave it no. This is saying, allow the person to download your song only from the same address they've already downloaded it from. Every computer in the world has an IP address. And so if I'm at my home computer, and I buy your song, I can only download the song again from my home computer. Okay, that's not so bad. But what if the person is at their friend's house and they bought my song from their friend's computer? Well, they bought it from a certain IP address. Then they try to download the song on their home computer, it's a different IP address. They will not be able to download it. And uh, these IP addresses change all the time, especially if you're on mobile. As you go from region to region and you change cell phone towers, you get a different address. So again, for most of us, we don't care. We're not selling virtual products. But if you are selling virtual, I don't recommend you turn on lock that IP, because you'll probably really lock out the person from downloading you the song. Store admin. This is coming from the general settings of WordPress. Whoever was the first administrator of this WordPress site, they had their email address added. And WP Commerce then uh, takes that address, and this is who will get emails about new sale was made, refund was requested, and so forth. If that you need that to go elsewhere, you can change it. 
it should be a real email that exists. Just typing something here doesn't mean it, it will create the email account. It has to be set to an account that exists. Yes? I have to double check on that, but if you do, most likely you just put semicolons and then um, you put the other. I'll check that in a moment. Let me, let me try that right now, actually. Let me click Save. Will it let me do multiple? Uh, perhaps it didn't give an error, so I think, yep, so semicolons. Yeah. So is that, that, that email that's in there is where any correspondence related to the store will go. So the customer types in a question, it's going to go to that email address. If the store is telling you sales, refunds, all that sort of stuff, that's where it's going to go. For store-related things, yes, that's where it's going to go. If it was like a contact form that you put in the contact screen, most likely that's going to be dependent on your contact form 7 plugin. Remember, that one can be set to a different email as well. But yes, pretty much all store-related things will be sent to this email address. All right, we have T's and C's, terms and conditions. This one is another one that I, I cannot fill in for you. I don't know what your terms and conditions are, but this is the part that you will write here something like no refunds or whatever. Whatever your uh, terms and conditions are, uh, are going to go here. And the cool thing is that when a person's about to buy a product, it will say, I have read and agree to the terms and conditions. Before they can buy, that will be there for them to read. Now, let's say Victor's Bakery. I'm going to be selling cookies and cakes and all of that stuff online. I'm going to ship to them the stuff of Victor's Bakery. So in that case, I would have an idea of what to write here, as opposed to what you would write if you're selling your own product. So you know, what's the standard disclaimer about allergens in, in, in food that you see all the time? Um, yeah, products may contain traces of tree nuts etc whatever that disclaimer is so then uh, people are aware they cannot buy the product until they've read that and agree that okay this might have a, a little bit of an allergen that I cannot eat they agree to it this is obviously not an ironclad contract but it does have uh, some clout in helping you in case there's litigation and if you don't know what to write here there's the there's the ability to search online and then search for something like um, example terms and conditions for online store food. You just go online, you search, and you'll find plenty of examples, some of them for free, some of them not, um, of what you can use. Copy and paste as is or change as you need it. Let's see what it says here sample terms and conditions templates, terms and conditions generator, terms and conditions for e commerce store. So I haven't checked any of these. I haven't vetted any of these. I don't know what's a good one. You can just go look at these and see which looks best for you. You may not even need that. You usually do for liability, legal purposes. And that's where you add it. The customers will get a receipt. And here's the basic template of what the receipt will look like. Who is it coming from? What is the address or what is the the who what's their what's their email, what's their name, who's it coming from and what's the message being sent? So again, this is something that uh, should exist um, this is something that should exist just by typing here doesn't doesn't create an email address um, something like that you often see no reply at whatever so you can put whatever you want there you could create a real email address uh, to capture those emails if you are going to check them what I will recommend here on emails Professional, not professional, 
conventional is something like you know, orders at victorsbakery.com. Not professional is victorsbakery at gmail.com. A professional um, online entity should have paid the little bit extra to have your own email address with your domain name. Not the free Gmail, not the free Yahoo Mail, not the free Cox Mail, not the free Outlook Mail. Spammers have those. Real web addresses, real businesses have a legitimate address. As we have so much spam nowadays, I don't doubt that Google and Bing and Yahoo and all of those are going to devalue a website, SEO rankings and such, when you don't have your own email address. Because spammers can create a thousand different Gmail addresses, a thousand different Yahoo addresses. And I don't doubt that the big search engines will eventually penalize us if we have that address, even though they gave us a free address. It's biting them. It's biting them in the, in the, in the foot. So shooting them in the foot. So um, I would recommend to have your own email address like that, and you get that from your provider, from GoDaddy, Bluehost, etc. It's coming from Victor's Bakery, or whatever you want this to say here. Victor's Bakery sales team, whatever you want that to say on the from box you can put whatever you want there the body is here's what it's going to show when they get the email thank you for your purchase from and then your shop will automatically be added here <coughs> any items to be shipped will be processed as soon as possible any digital items etc uh, your order these items and you'll get a they'll get a product list how much it was for total price and all of that these little sort of like keywords are coming from right here. You can have a purchase ID, the name of your shop. All of these will automatically populate if you uh, if you put in these things here. A little find us questionnaire in that format. Oops, right if I add that. Now in this particular case, any digital items that can be downloaded. I'm not selling any digital items, so I would definitely want to remove that. You can say in this email anything you want. Tracking information email, you can set that up there. I'll click Save. This is going to be the basic uh, plugin, but that other one that was mentioned in the uh, general screen, there was another one over here at the bottom. Um, that one's a more powerful one, but you get a basic one from the screen we're looking at here. But the one in the general seems to be the tracking by WPC Commerce with how this plugin is being used. Whereas the other one seems to be package tracking. So I order something from Amazon, says it's shipped, here's a tracking number, I can go in and find out where it is when it's getting there, I guess that. You know, you're right. I didn't, I didn't notice that. It used to be different, and I think they just changed it. So I was assuming it was the same thing. I should have read it. But yes, this is totally something different. This is allow uh, usage statistics. Oh, OK. And you get a 20% discount. Yeah, it's totally something different. Uh, never mind that then. So yeah, if you turn that on to allow anonymous statistics, you can get 20% off buying the full copy of WP Commerce. So then that's unrelated to this one, sorry. It is a different uh, tracking system here. Uh, there's a different screen. A basic one, yeah. We're going to skip taxes and shipping for, for the moment and jump to payments. This is where you can have a variety of complication or easy setup. 
I'm going to mention right here. And then we'll take a break in a moment. Um, payments, options, easy, not so easy, easy, PayPal, not so easy, anything else. You may have authorized.net, you may have a, uh, a virtual terminal, you may have um, a merchant account and all of that. Um, those are the ones that are not as easy to set up. PayPal uh, is the one that uh, could be the easiest of all because um, it would be the one right over here. Um, PayPal standard. There's a bunch of different types of PayPal. PayPal Pro and Hosted and all of these that are they getting even more complex. Yeah. Can you tell the difference between the PayPal? because I'm saying it in class right now. Um, the one that we want is this one of um, standard because all of these other ones need a lot more setup. So in my experience, okay, you need an API username and a password and a signature and server and IPN. Okay, the, the easy answer is the easiest one, if you want to use PayPal, it is going to be the one of PayPal standard. Because all that this needs to be set up with is what is the email address that you set up your PayPal with? That will then automatically work. It will transfer the money when someone buys your product. If you create a free PayPal account, it asks you for an email address. That's your username. You set up PayPal, you set up your bank in PayPal and all of that, and there's a process in PayPal. But once that's set up, People can send you money by that email address. They don't even, you don't even have to have a whole store and stuff. Your email address can accept PayPal money. And all that you would need to do here is um, put your email address there and that's it. All of these other settings are not necessary. It would just need to be your PayPal address. So with this easy way, Set up a free PayPal account, like link your bank, add your email from PayPal to WP eCommerce, collect money from debit or credit cards. PayPal account not necessary. For the for the buyer. So uh, people often ask, okay, well if I'm not going to set up uh, PayPal, that means that the person needs a PayPal account to pay me, right? No, they will be able to uh, pay you as as a guest. It will then recommend, would you like to create a PayPal account to easily store your information for next time? Well, the reason I'm also saying that this is the easy way is because this also then takes care partly of your security. So notes on payment security. On site, off site, on site you have more liability. Off-site, you have less liability. Off-site, PayPal processes the credit cards for you. You never touch it, store it, Targeted by hackers. Um, people will add this stuff to their cart on your site. But then when they go to check out, they will be transferred over to the secure PayPal site with some of the best security in the world. The processing of the credit card and all of that happens on PayPal. That gets done, and then it sends you back to your site. So those credit cards never go through your site. They never get stored on your site. 
you have PayPal doing it all. Yes. You can have them set up accounts for use for their email address and all of their contact information. What is not being stored on the account is the credit card info. It will store their name and email and phone or whatever you're asking to collect. So there is that liability. But perhaps the bigger liability of credit cards is not being stored on your site. Obviously what? A delivery address and so on and so forth. Yes, you will be able to collect uh, some of that information, shipping for newsletters and all of that. Uh, on site you have more uh, you have more liability on site is on your site you collect all that all vulnerable info and need to have SSL set up not free and management so uh, you could have it that the person stays on your site that's going to be one of the different PayPal ones. There's one called something like PayPal Onsite, something like that. Well, that's what that is. If you've got your site set up with SSL security and you've got it hardened against attack and all of that, you can have people stay on your site completely always and do their credit cards and everything on your site. But then you've got even more liability. You have to be even more compliant. You have to have that SSL and more setup. Uh, so um, it really is going to be a lot more straightforward to have PayPal do the hard work. Yes? It's probably still worth it just to pay for the SSL, even if, even if you're not doing e-commerce nowadays. Nowadays, that's a deeper discussion for the SEO class. But yes, nowadays, even uh, having SSL, that's, a, that's also one of the many factors that also helps you nowadays rank a little better regarding SEO. Secure sockets layer. It's just security. It's the little lock that appears on the web browser. So the search engines now they're gonna they're not they're not making it required yet, but eventually the search engines will make it required that if you want to rank well on their search engine, uh, they will want you to have the lock, especially if you're an e-commerce site or have users' information. So they're they're gonna change the rules all the time, and it's a good idea to follow them. For the moment, though, we're letting PayPal be the secure aspect of things, but that would be something to think about in the future, adding security to our site. It's not that expensive. It's worst case scenario, it's like $99 a year. And that's, again, uh, cost of doing business. But oftentimes, you can get a discount. First year, $59. Or first year free SSL, but then after that, it goes up. Yes? Yeah. Yeah, all of these companies have a deal, usually. Uh, and um, it, is, it is worth it. Mm. Good deals. This, yeah. You get it from your provider uh, where you got your domain name and you've got your hosting. Usually you get it from there. So GoDaddy, Bluehost, One and One, those providers, they also give, uh, sell you that service or give you the first year free. Those are the ones that I often mention and have dealt with in the real world. Uh, there's a lot of other ones out there, uh, like HostGator. Uh, I've dealt with them a few times. Uh, I think there's one called One and One. It's pretty good. I haven't done with them, dealt with them that much, but a lot of these big ones are good. People sometimes come in and like, what about Cloudfire Net? Well, I've never heard of it. Maybe it's good. Maybe l look up a, a testimonial or two. If you like it and it does what you need, then that's the right answer. Uh, but I've dealt, you know, since 2001 with GoDaddy and Bluehost, so I've seen those for years. There's also DreamHost. That's one I've started to see recently, and that one's very good too. I've been working with GoDaddy. Their support has been excellent. Oh, good. Yeah, uh, tech support is one of the biggest things also for any of those providers. Yes, they have their, their products, but then you need the tech support. Can I call them up and talk to someone to help me fix it? I've often called like at midnight, and they're one time zone away, and they answer, and they help. 
So if you're using any of these you want to turn on, just to put whatever, um, I'm going to turn on, I will collect payment via PayPal payments standard. We had down here also test gateway, but I'll just click save. We have ChronoPay, we have uh, ProPay, we have Word WorldPay. There's other ones that are out there like Stripe and Authorize.net. Notice if they're not visible here, that's usually one of these other child plugins. Authorize.net uh, would give you uh, their own plugin, perhaps, to then add to it. If that merchant account, merchant account is often set up through the processor, then the processor is connected here. So again, it could be complex, but using something like the basic PayPal works well. And uh, this test gateway, it's got some basic settings. It'll just say uh, manual payment, payment instructions. If you want to, you can just put here, warning, no products will be sold. Just to see what it looks like when we're ready to purchase, you'll have the option, pay with PayPal, pay with a test. Uh, if you don't want it to say pay with PayPal, if you just wanted to say pay now, you see that you've got it, your option there. Settings, how will the person select how they're gonna pay? The default says PayPal standard payment. You can just say pay now. You can say credit cards accepted. The sandbox is another one of these for testing purposes. You're going to simulate a payment happening, and then you can uh, then put it into the live account once it's ready to take the payments. But I kind of find that it's a lot easier just to set up a product of $1 and then go through the process of buying that $1 product to make sure it's all working. I've kind of found it a little bit more of a setup than necessary. Because if it says, if you have a developer sandbox account, use that. So that's an extra setup. I'll just say make a dollar product, pay for that, and then refund yourself a dollar. Right, let's, uh, let's take a break. This uh, payment system here is, in one case, could be deceptively simple. You set up a PayPal account, you're done. It could be complex depending on how you want to collect payments.